goodness with face, pat, and tiz. Um, but yeah, man, let's get right off into it, man. We all know good vibe. It's been a good day. So uh, let's get straight into the goodness and the positive black news of the week. Week, 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 week. The cool week. shit black people are doing, experiencing, and uh, just initiating in our world. So the first story comes to us from uh, the hatching, the the the. <laughs> teachingreport.org um, and basically building virtual monuments to black historical figures. Immersive technology lets students learn about black historical fi figures on their phones. So uh -huh. the, the um, Hetchinger Report is basically a national nonprofit newsroom that reports on one topic and that's education. So this is uh, basically about a student. Um, a uh -huh. high school a high schooler, Joshua Carter, didn't like, didn't learn about black historical figures like Ida B. Wells, Sh Shirley Chisholm, or Denmark Vesey from his high school social studies textbooks. He learned about them through his app on his phone. The app is called uh -huh. Kinfolk, and it basically transports students like Carter to an augmented reality space where they can walk up to virtual monuments of 10 famous black historical figures and learn their stories. Students can uh, hear narration about these individuals. They can read biographies, look at artifacts from their lives, and learn about the time period in which they lived and what they accomplished. Um, Carter, a rising senior at Teaneck High School in New Jersey, said the app allows him to see people that look like him in a good light. Um, Ken Folk was launched in February by the Ed Tech nonprofit Movers and Shakers NYC, and the group is headed by CEO Glenn Cant Cantave, a black man. A fellow lock brethren, you know, big tangs of guan. So, um, yeah, man, uh, and yeah, man, get your kids on this, man. Like, this could be the new wave of like, you know, everything is going digital now, especially now that schools have been virtual for so long now. So, like, let's support this, y'all. Uh, the app is called Ken Folk. Let your kids check it out at home. If you got young kids that are always on their tablet or something, download it on their tablet. I'm definitely about to put my son on it. Um, but yeah, you said man, it goes through like a virtual museum of sorts, like on they, the screen. Basically, basically, okay. yep. And they can and they like I what I like about it is like a lot of times we teach kids about historical figures, but we don't really give them the context about like the society, how society was in that particular time period, which made this accomplishment so cool. Yeah. Um, I like that they said that they can learn about the time period in which the people live. So they actually get that background context of like, okay, I understand why this struggle that this person did was so great or why the accomplishment yeah. this person did. It. You know what I mean? It gives them a little extra. So yeah. I like it. And, and, you know, all the kids are on their phones, tablets, or computers all day anyway. So it like it being in an app form, it just give them, give you as a parent even something that you can give the kids and, and, and make that knowledge accessible. Like, you know what I mean? Like in our house, we big on learning about black history. You know, my son, he actually, you know, one of his dreams is to be an astronaut, but he also wants to be a, be a speaker and give speeches that change the world like Martin Luther King. So like, you know, he's already on that path. So like, I can use this to introduce him to some other figures that that he can get and it's in a way that's digestible for him. So I, I like this man. Um shout out to brother, what was his name? How did he say it? Cantave, Glenn uh -huh. Cantave. Look him uh -huh. up though, Movers and Shakers NYC. Let's support, let's support this black man. And um, so he can make more apps that help our black babies learn about themselves, man. Dope shit. Dope shit. Dope shit. That's dope. It's dope that your son basically wanna be Neil deGrasse Tyson Luther King Jr. Yeah, he also wants to be a paleontologist. Um, yeah. So he got some lofty-ass goals. So I told him he better, you know, let, let's stay focused on these books then, champ. Let's let's stay ahead because you're going you gonna to have a lot of school in. need a boss. Yeah, you, you got a lot of degrees you're going for there, boss. You're going for more degrees than Uma. So uh, <laughs> it's about to get real for him. But, um, yeah, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Black people mm -hmm. like this are good inspirations for my son, man. I, I like seeing stuff like this. This is dope. Um, so, yeah, man, let's keep it going with the cool black news, man. Um, L.A. County moves forward 
with the return of the black family's land. Um, and this uh-huh. is coming to us from usnews.com. Um, Los Angeles County leaders are moving forward with a plan to return prime beachfront property to descendants of a black couple who built a resort for African-Americans, but was stripped of the land by local officials a century ago. So uh, mm-hmm. basically, uh, they're moving forward with a plan to return prime beachfront property to these to the uh, descendants of this couple. And the Board of Supervisors voted unanimously Tuesday to preserve, to pursue an action plan created by the County Chief Executive's Office on returning the land to the descendants of Willa and Charles Bruce once the state allows it. So dope shit. Um, California seems to be coming strong oh, here with yeah. the positive black mm-hmm. shit. Like, I believe they were the one that had the first state reparations committed as, you know, looking yeah. into reparations we, th- we learned about, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And like, now yeah. they coming with this where they're giving people they land back, you know, that were, that were had it wrongfully taken. Like, I don't know, man. Other states, come on, let's follow this lead, man. This is some good yeah. momentum here. Cali trying to be the example. That's basically what it is. Trying to be the example. Hey, man, when you making something right, man, I like it, man. Progressive type of shit. Right. And the supervisor, Holly Mitchell, she said, we cannot achieve racial equity until we confront our past and make it right. And that's the thing people keep forgetting. Uh-huh. With the race conversation, like everybody want everybody to just get over it. But it's like, it, I always liken it to like the street shit, right? Say I either rob you, I punch you, I stab you, I shoot you, shoot at you, I, I, I hold I hold your cousin for ransom. I do something to harm you, right? But then I ask you to get over it and I want to hang with you every day and I still want to be cool and you know I want you to act like ain't nothing ever happened. You ain't about to hang with me every day after that. Uh-uh. Like nope. I got to like to even come close to that to 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 being able to be in the same room with me, I got to first do something to, to as a an act of goodwill cuz I've caused you nothing but pain so far. So I got to come with something that shows you like I'm serious about this. I'm really trying to make amends and, you know, give you something or, or do something or extend some type of offer to you that make that, that allows you to get whatever justice you feel is good enough for you to make amends and we can move forward. But I got to come to you with that. I can't. Oh, you know, just, just don't worry about it. I know that, I know that you still got that big gash in your head, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. No, man, that ain't how life works. And when you, and I think that's the that's a big part of it. So shout out to California and uh, Los Angeles for doing that. That's that's a real dope move. And I hope that we keep with this type of positive momentum toward just restoring people and doing what's right, man. Giving people justice. Yeah, man. All right. Story number three in the cool black news. And this is coming to us from the New York Times.com. Eric Adams' win is a watershed moment for Black leaders in New York. Black candidates are poised to occupy some of New York's top elected offices, including those of mayor, public advocate, and two of the city's five district attorneys. A cascade of victories for Black candidates in the New York City Democratic primaries highlighted by Eric Adams' win in the mayoral race is redefining the flow of political power in the nation's largest city. For just the second time in its history, New York City is on track to have a black mayor. For the first time ever, the Manhattan District Attorney is set to be a black man after Alvin Bragg won the Democratic nomination. The city's public advocate who was black cruised to victory in last month's primary. As many as three of the five city borough presidents may be people of color and the city council is poised to be notably diverse. So people in New York, my, my black and brown and my, my allies in New York, get out to them polls, vote, vote, vote. You know, they are trying to make it harder. So make sure you study the laws in your area in New York and make sure that you do everything that you need to do to get your vote in by all legal means so we can get this diversity push, man. Like the more, representative oh these leadership positions are of the actual fabric of America, the, the better we gonna be, the, 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 the easier it's gonna be to like actually come to compromises because you're gonna have more representation of everybody instead of it being one group leading all of these other 
people. So mm-hmm. don't move, don't move. New York, get out there and vote. New York City, get out there and vote, 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 vote in your local elections. Please, please, please. But yeah, man, dope shit coming. Dope. Big things are gone. Big things are gone. Oh God, Jesus, big lungs are blown. <laughs> You are. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. fuck? You good, bro? Yeah, the lungs, the lungs. About to have bad black <laughs> news as we as we lose a partner. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, leave it alone, man. When they're doing you like that, it's, it's, it's winning. It's it's one. You lose, nigga. <laughs> Round two. Shit. But yeah, man, that was a. Uh, the third in the in the in the black the cool black news. So number four, Instagram is making it easier to discover black owned businesses with a new feature. So we got a company helping entrepreneurs. The Instagram community is coming together in support of black owned businesses, and now those entrepreneurs are finding creative ways to be discovered through the app. According to Instagram, last summer through fall. There were over 1.3 million Instagram posts in support of Black-owned or Black-led businesses, and the number of businesses located in the U.S. with the Black-owned or Black-led and profiles increased over 50%. This is something owners of Coastal Bend Black-owned businesses say is a step in the right direction. Krista Evans, the social media manager at KES Emporium, said, Acknowledge the fact that we do have our businesses. We are thriving. We do support each other. And we are a community that is looking to thrive just like anybody else. And it means a lot. So um, basically, by the power of us continuing to push these hashtags and support these pages of these Black-owned businesses, we are making it easier to find new Black businesses. So my people, my people, my people. Let's keep getting out here. And when you see some, if somebody make a cool shirt for you or somebody, you know, got a cool product that you use or they 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 do a cool service for you and they, you know, black, I mean, go ahead, shout them out. Go ahead, put that picture out, put that Instagram out, put that, tweet, that Twitter handle out, you know, because it's helping. So, yeah, man, salute to us black businesses that are thriving because, you know, us partners are a black business. And, yeah, man, go ahead. Hashtags are working, y'all. Yeah, man. We don't be thinking that shit be working, but it's doing something good for us. So let's keep it up, guys. And finally. Oh, yeah. What you say? What? The support may start small, but it can always end up big, man. Mm, That's big facts. Plant that seed. Big facts. Big facts. Um, And speaking of seeds, uh, let's see what happens when one of when, when they grow. So black play, black playwrights are taking Broadway by storm this year as seven new black plays are scheduled for this year's uh, play season or whatever. All eyes are on black playwrights who are the center of attention on Broadway as seven new black plays are scheduled throughout the remainder of this year. Um, all of the plays were written by black writers, which is one of which is technically premiered before the pandemic hit in New York City. Uh, according to Deadline. The fall lineup, according to Playbill, has an array of writers who have written comedies to coming-of-age stories, and it will feature the youngest director in the organization's more than 250 years, 27-year-old Zaylon Livingston, who happens to be the Black producer behind the 2008 movie, The Long Shot, featuring Ice Cube and Kiki Palmer. So, people, we out here grinding, man. And I did not know that that young person was the black producer behind the 2008 movie. That's crazy. That mean that you were what, 14 years old? Oh shoot! Yeah, like that's that's pretty. That's crazy. Amazing. So man, yeah, black people are kicking ass, man. Um, if you happen to be making a trip to the Northeast, stop by Broadway, man. Check support these black plays, man. Um, it's gonna be Passover, Lackawanna Blues which was a good movie. Um, Great one. Was it Chicken Chicken and Biscuits? Thoughts of a Colored Man? Trouble in Mind? Clyde's? And the Skeleton Crew. So go go support these Black plays, um, all written by Black writers, so you're getting a Black perspective on whatever it is. And yeah, man, let's support us, man. So that is the cool 
black news you can use for the week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But like, shout out to Melanin, man. Fucking magnificent Melanin. Kicking ass. <laughs>